Every coach on The Voice has their own methods for getting artists on their side. Some simply use their own reputation as an artist, others talk about their famous friends, still others speak from the heart and try to relate to prospective team members on a deeper level. Then there's new coach Michael Bublé, who has a different tactic altogether, and it came to a head during the fourth episode of season 26. In his first season as a voice coach, Bublé has developed an interesting tick when talking to vocalists that is, at its core, quite simple, he lies. Not about important things exactly, but Bublé has a tendency to make up stories about his life during blind auditions, throwing everyone off their game. So far this season, Bublé has mentioned he was on the Titanic. He's claimed it was his anniversary when it wasn't. He's claimed he has a toupee, and he's dropped weird little lies so often that even host Carson Daly has stepped in to ask him what's up. It's an odd tendency, and it made one coach reveal an entirely new button during Memphis native Jameson Puckett's blind audition Tuesday night. Puckett, a 34-year-old singer who got his start in churches and is now married with his first child on the way, launched into a soulful, stripped-down cover of the Journey classic, faithfully for his blind audition. By the end of the psalm, he'd earned two chair turns from Bublé and Reba Missentire. During the post-song interview, Gwen Stefani praised his potential and praised Bubbly's willingness to take a chance on the singer. I didn't press, but when you pressed it made me so happy. Stephanie told Bubbly. I like your taste. When it was Bubbly's turn to react to Puckett's performance, he took a different approach. I'm not happy, I'm deeply unhappy, because Reba turned too, and I'm so tired of this, Bubbly joked. I truly am. Bubbly then launched into a strange story that turned out to be nothing more than reciting a version of the plot of the 1999 film Fight Club, starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. When I was a kid, I don't know 2021, I moved to Lay trying to get my big break. Bubbly began. I was in this underground club where we used to fight. You weren't allowed to talk about it, that was rule number one. And now, after that life and fighting, Miss Entire then hit a button somewhere on her chair, cutting Bubbly off with an excerpt from her 1990 hit single You Lie. The entire panel of coaches burst into laughter, and Bubbly in particular laughed to the point of tears. We don't know yet how Miss Entire got her own button to deploy specifically on Bubbly, but chances are it'll come up again, because Bubbly shows no signs of stopping his tactics. In the meantime, the segment closed with a happy ending as Puckett picked Bublé to be his coach, adding another vocalist to Team Michael. There's a big difference between a lie and a fib, Bublé said by way of explaining himself. And also, you know what? It's humor. I'm just throwing everything out there, see what works. I'm having too much fun. Mason Tyre's explanation for the new button. She's trying to throw Bublé off his game with a little tactic of her own. You can't trust a thing, he says, so I hit my you lie button, she said. The lights dimmed across the studio as a palpable excitement rippled through the audience. It was another night of electrifying performances on The Voice, but this evening, the coach's banter promised to be just as memorable as the talent on stage. In the center of it all was the crooner himself, Michael Bublé, smooth, charming, and a notorious joker. Yet, his easygoing demeanor had landed him in some playful trouble with his fellow coaches lately, and tonight would be no exception. Bublé, known for his velvety voice and sharp wit, had been a guest coach on the show for several seasons. He had even occasionally filled in for the mainstays like John Legend or Blake Shelton when their schedules got tight. But this season, with Blake taking a break and Reba Missentire settling in as a new mainstay, Bublé had become a regular fixture on the coaching panel, sharing the stage with Gwen Stefani, Kelly Clarkson, and new addition Kelsey Ballerini. Though his musical insights were always on point, there was one thing that had started to stir the pot, his fibs. It started innocently enough. Bubbly would tell an outlandish story during rehearsals or sprinkle in a few exaggerated details about his connections in the music industry. The other coaches thought it was just his natural flair for entertainment, until they started noticing a pattern. The tipping point came during the blind auditions. A contestant, a soulful young singer from New Orleans performed a stunning rendition of Nana Simone's Feeling Good that made Bubbly's eyes light up. As the final note hung in the air, Bubbly hit his button and spun around, applauding enthusiastically. 
That was incredible, he said, standing up. You know, I once had the chance to perform with Nina Simone herself. Backstage at this tiny jazz club in Montreal, we did an impromptu duet of feeling good, just like you did. The contestants' eyes widened in awe, and the audience erupted into applause. But Kelly Clarkson, who had also turned her chair, raised an eyebrow. Wait a second, Michael, she said with a laugh. Nina Simone passed away in 2003, and weren't you still, like, recording your first album around then? The crowd chuckled, and Bublé gave a sheepish grin. Well, okay, maybe it wasn't exactly with her, he admitted. But I felt her spirit in the room. His boyish charm softened the fib, but it wasn't the first time he had been caught embellishing. Michael, you've got to stop. Gwen Stephanie chimed in, shaking her head with a smirk. This is like the third time this season you've said you performed with someone you never met. Oh, come on. Bubbly said, feigning hurt. It's all part of the showbiz mystique. From that moment on, the other coaches were on high alert. Every time Bubbly opened his mouth, they listened carefully, waiting for the inevitable tall tale. And he did not disappoint. During the babble rounds, he claimed he had once given vocal coaching to Frank Sinatra, in a dream. Kelly quipped. And during a team rehearsal, he swore he had co-written the song with the legendary Burt Bacharach. Michael, you weren't even born when that song was written. Kelsey Ballerini pointed out, laughing. What are you even talking about? Details, details. Bubbly waved it off with a flourish, his Canadian accent making the whole thing sound even more disarming. Look, I'm here for the contestants. I want to inspire them with stories, real or slightly enhanced. Isn't that what music's all about? His colleagues were not having it. They began to call him out more frequently, turning his harmless white lies into running jokes. Things reached a boiling point during one particularly heated rehearsal. Bubbly's team was working through a complex arrangement of Cry Me a River, a song famously associated with him. He was giving feedback to one of his contestants, an aspiring jazz singer, and talking about the first time he performed the song with Tony Bennett at a private event for royalty. Kelsey, who had been sitting quietly on the sidelines, suddenly burst out laughing. Michael, no, you did not, she said, holding her sides. I saw that documentary about you, and you've told like four different versions of that story. First, it was an event for the Queen of England, then it was a charity gala, and now it's a private event for royalty. Which is it? The contestant looked confused, unsure whether to take Bubbly seriously or not. But Bubbly, ever the entertainer, rolled with it. All right, all right, maybe I'm mixing up my stories, he admitted. But the point is, the performance was epic. You should sing it like you're performing for royalty, even if it's just the neighbor's cat watching you through the window. The rehearsal dissolved into laughter, but the coaches had had enough. Later that evening, during the live show, Kelly and Gwen decided it was time to confront Bubbly once and for all. As the show went live and the coaches took their seats, Kelly gave a knowing look to Gwen and Kelsey. The audience sensed something was coming as the cameras zoomed in on the coaches' playful expressions. Michael. Kelly began, her voice dripping with mischief. We've all been talking, and we've noticed a bit of a pattern with your stories. Oh no, here we go, Bubbly groaned, resting his head in his hands in mock defeat. You just can't stop lying, can you? Gwen added with a grin. Every time we turn around, you've sung with a new 